Hey everyone, welcome back to Contractor Growth Network. On today's episode, I'm walking through one of my favorite aspects of business, and that is sales, specifically what has become known as the Shin Fu process. You may have heard it before, but if you haven't, you definitely want to check it out. Here we go. Welcome back to Contractor Growth Network. I'm Logan. And I'm Alex. And today we're going to be running all down something called the Shin Fu process. And here's why is I've always strayed away from talking about sales for the most part on this podcast, because this is a marketing podcast. At the end of the day, though, when you think about the name contractor growth network, it's all about growth, mm -hmm. which is everything, you know, it's whatever it takes to grow the business. And without sales, you don't have any growth in the business. So today's going to be all through that. So Alex, in your opinion, you've been around for Shin Fu for a while, what is the Shin Fu process? It's a five-step pre-qualification process. So mostly done over the phone, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and basically it's to decide if, the I don't wanna say it meanly, but the client's worth your time or not. Like, is it in the same, you know, ballpark? That's exactly what it is. Yeah, it, to be blunt, it's, you know, are they worth the- Worth the- The travel. Travel, The yeah. trouble. Yeah. So the way that the Shin Fu process started, and this is big, if you've never heard of this before, it's all stemming from the Contractor Sales Academy. And the, the background on this was, Growing up, my dad's a contractor, a pond and water feature contractor, and he went through this cycle where what would happen is a homeowner would call him up or fill out a form on his website and reach out and say, hey, I would like to get a quote for a waterfall in my backyard. And he would go, all right, great. And then he would hop in his truck, drive out there, do, give the quote to them right there on the spot, go through everything, take about, let's say, a 45-minute drive, a two-hour consultation, uh, then give them the quote, another 45 minute drive on the way home. So now it's about three and a half hours. And then the homeowner at the end of, before he leaves the house, they would go, oh yeah, I got to think it over. Or yep, let me just talk to my husband and I'll get back to you. And guess what happens every single time they said that? No. They, well, <clears throat> not, what's worse than a no, they wouldn't even respond. Oh really? Yeah. That's, that is way worse. It's way worse. Yeah. So they got ghosted and that happened over and over and over. And what he realized was, he thought, okay, and he got smart before this. He said, I actually have a $75 consultation fee, which weeds out some people, people who are totally price shopping. But even with, you know, before going out there, even before he would go out, he would tell people, I have a $75 consultation fee, mm -hmm. and he still had a 24% close rate in the yard. So that means that out of every 100 jobs he goes out to, he's only getting... 24 of them. Mm -hmm. The other 76, for the most part, just totally ghosted him. A few of them would say no. But for the most part, he's stuck on what they call Hope Island, okay. which is where you say, yep, I got all these proposals out there. I'm going to make so much money. And I, it still happens to me when I ever talk to a contractor. And I'm like, how's everything going in the business? And they go, it's great. I've got you know 15 proposals out there. So it might be a killer 2020. It also might be nothing. I have no idea. Mm-hmm which is a terrible place to be because how can you forecast or do anything in the business if you have no idea if you're going to make a million dollars off those 15 proposals or absolutely nothing? Yeah, that's a horrible way to Yeah, to could live. you imagine? It's, it's horrible. Yeah. It's so uneasy. Right. So that is the nature of being in sales in general, but specifically with a contractor where you drive out to the home. So he said, screw it. I'm not doing this anymore. And he developed what is now known as the Shin Fu process. And the name Shin Fu, Shin comes from my last name or, and his last name, Shin Holster. And Fu comes from uh, one of the guys that's in the CSA said, it's almost like when he talks to you, he just did some, uh, some like sales Kung Fu on you and you end up buying. So they combined it into Shin Fu. Mm -hmm. And that is how it came up with its name at this point. So... The five steps, and, and here's why this is super important, is I know for me, whenever I sell, and I talk to a, a contractor, and I say, all right, what do you want to do from here? And they're like, I got to think it over, or let me just double check something, and I'll give you a call right back. And if they ghost me, it, it frustrates the hell out of me because they lied to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm a huge opponent of lying. Like, mm -hmm. own your, like one of our values is own your domain, meaning just own your shit, live up to it. And when people lie to me, it bugs me to no end. Mm -hmm. But they're lying to me over the phone. Mm -hmm. I don't have to drive anywhere. And yeah. it's usually a half an hour conversation. And then they lie. Not me spend money on gas, mm -hmm. drive out there, do the job, or do the, the consultation, then drive back. 
change your whole day for it. It's your whole day right there. And then yeah. imagine like doing that over and over and over only to get ghosted all the time to make zero dollars. I mean, how would you feel if, if that was the case? I feel horrible. Yeah. It's way worse to get ghosted in person than it is over the phone. I mean, no mm-hmm. one likes to get ghosted, but I, I wasted all my time playing my day. And especially if I know I have to be somewhere at a certain time, the, yeah. big, the morning kind of gets delayed because I'm like, well, I got to be here by this, so I can't do this, can't do that. So I'd feel horrible. I mean, think about it. So if I do a half, like I do everything because I'm pretty concise. I do a half an hour consultation versus 45 minutes out, two hours there, 45 minutes back. That's one's a half an hour long and one's three and a half hours long. So let's just say if you learn how to do it over the phone, that's an extra three hours every day that you free up to do whatever it is that you want, Mm -hmm. whether it's more marketing or spending time with your family, you free that up and you don't have to deal with face-to-face rejection in essence. Yeah. I I look at it from a consumer's standpoint where if the contractor necessarily comes out to mm-hmm. the job, I consider that not a negative, obviously, but like on the initial meet, he has too much time on his hands or she has too much time on her hands. Right. Like it's it's just okay. Like if you're willing to drop everything right now. And then if you think about like the whole idea of like, you know, Reaver has got this whole mentality of bringing respect back to the trades. But if somebody calls you up and says, hey, I want to quote and you drive, jump right in your truck and you drive out there, mm-hmm. how do you bring respect to yourself? Like, could yeah. you imagine like how many times have you ever like, like, you know what? I want you to get a doctor over here right now. It Never. doesn't happen. <laughs> right. It just doesn't happen like that. Yeah. Lawyers, all that kind of stuff. But contractors expected to do that. Yeah. And until you say, whoa, 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 I got a process to go through this, you're going to continue with this cycle. And it's going to continue to push the idea that a contractor, the way they should do business is just hop in the truck and do whatever it takes to win the job. Mm-hmm. And I've had a couple of people tell me before, like, well, you got to, you have to earn my business. And I'm like, you know what? Clearly, I did a really poor job of showing you the value yeah. of what I do, so I'm out. Like, yeah. I'm good. Like, if that's your mentality, that's fine. And it's usually people that say that are the ones that, as contractors, that's what they get all day long, and they just get on all day long. So they project onto me mm-hmm. by going, well, you got to prove your value. And it's most likely because a homeowner says to them, well, you're more expensive than the other person. you got to prove to me why you're worth more. Mm-hmm. And it's like... What are you feeling? You'll be calling back to, for me to fix it. That's yeah, why. yeah. That's... <laughs> it's it's tough. So yeah. I, I get it because you, you get beat down so much and you think that's just part of business. But the Shin Fu process really does. It it, it works. Mm-hmm. So was, it, was your dad afraid like when he first decided to like, you know, transition try, try, to that? Yeah. Yeah. So the way that the Shin Fu process works is, and I'll walk through the five steps, mm-hmm. but instead of dropping everything you're doing and driving out there, you have a pre-qualifying conversation over the phone. And... What you talk about, just real briefly, is you talk about what the person really wants, ballpark figures, um, when they get when the contractor goes out there, can you at least get a yes or a no on the spot? Making sh- uh, Step four is making sure all decision makers are there. And step five is a consultation fee. Mm-hmm. Now, he was super nervous. I remember I was in um, Austin, Texas. Um, it was like myself, him, and my mom in a hotel room because we were there watching my other brother, uh, one of my brothers dive for net and nationals. And my dad was looking out the window, mouthing to himself something. We're like, all right, he's finally lost it. Like, that's it. <laughs> he's, that's it. But he was practicing what he was going to say. Mm. So he practiced it over and over and over. And what he actually did to master this is he signed up for Home Advisor. And he said it was the best, one of the best things he ever did because he signed up for Home Advisor. Mm-hmm. And Home Advisor, if you guys are listening to this, you know what kind of leads you're going to get. And he said it was just, I practiced. I, he was like, I got 60 leads right off the bat for the most part. Mm-hmm. He said 59 of them were tire kickers. And one of them, he ended up selling a small job to, which paid for itself. He said, but I got 50, or I got 60 practice runs on this with yeah. people that were never going to be my clients anyway. And I knew that. But I at least got the practice of trying this thing out. So he got a lot of reps in right off the bat with this system. That's pretty smart. Yeah. And if you think about it, I mean, these are all like tire kickers who yeah. just don't see the value in what he was doing or mm-hmm. delivering at that price point. But that would have been 59 people that he would have driven out to see. Yeah. That wouldn't have been a good fit anyway. Yeah. It would delay the process of finding actual clients yeah. he would like, want to do work for. Right. And he couldn't be in Texas if, you know, doing these phone calls if he was driving all over town because he had to go see, do estimates. Yeah. So he would have been stealing time away from hanging out with, you know, or seeing his uh, youngest son dive at in nationals, which is like a pretty big deal at that age. So mm-hmm. 
he missed out on all of it. So the, the way that the Shin Fu works, though, is it's five steps. And the first step is pain slash pleasure. And I use this all the time. This is what most sales reps should be doing is they don't when somebody says, oh, I want you to come paint the inside of my kitchen. There's, there's a deeper reason why. So Alex, with my car, if I say, oh, I want to get a new car. What are some of the reasons why I would want to get a new car, you think? Is something wrong with your car? Is it, um, how old is it? How many miles are on it? You know, maybe like you just want to upgrade. What about my specific car? Yours, like the car in real the, life? The car have? that I have out front right now. Well, I know your rims are, you know, something's wrong with your rims. They're dented or leaking or something like that. So you need to air up your tires every three days. Mm -hmm. So you'd probably be like, I'm done with the headache of this car. I want to get a new one. So how do you think I feel when I, every three days I go out to my car not knowing if I'm going to have a flat tire or not. Uh, probably frustrated, anxious, mm -hmm. stressed, wet because it's raining yeah. today. <laughs> yeah, it's pouring today. And I would walk out there and realize I would have to pump this tire up or put on a spare tire, which I've had to do twice in the past week and a half. Mm -hmm. Now, that is really the real reason why I want to get a new car is mm -hmm. because I'm so mad at this one because the tires keep leaking, the uh, mirrors keep getting stuck which is a weird thing in itself. But unless you ask that question, unless the car salesman says, hey, I'm just curious, why are you getting a new car? Then I'm not going to tell him. Mm -hmm. But if he just goes right into his pitch of, if I say, hey, I want to get a new car, and he goes, great, let me show you all the options. Well, he's not listening to me. He doesn't know what I'm really looking for. Mm -hmm. And he's just going to go down his pitch and talk about why every car is great, which is what most contractors and people in business do mm -hmm. is you call me up and you go, Hey Logan, I'm a contractor. I want to get a new website. And if I went right into great, let me tell you my websites. And you're like, well, you have no idea what I actually want. Yeah. You just, you just know I want a website and you went right into how great your websites are. But if you take a step back and I go, all right, Alex, you want a new website. What's going on that makes you want to get a new website? Like, why do you want a new website? Then you're going to tell me all this information about whatever the pain is in your business. Mm -hmm. Hey, Logan, I'll need to grow more. Or my website right now is so embarrassing that when clients see it, you know, I think it turns away work. Mm -hmm. And then I can use that to sell. Because now I can go, you know, Alex, that makes sense. So you're saying that whenever a, a client or a prospect sees your website and it doesn't show how professional you actually are in, in real life, you're saying you think it turns work away? And then now I understand what's truly going on here. And it takes me from just a website builder over to a problem solver. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes perfect sense. Okay. You, it, it comes off as you're very personable too, because while you're using it as a sales tactic, it's not, it doesn't really come off that salesy because you're asking about them like, oh, why? What's going on? You know, I, the car yeah. example is good because I mean, I think everyone's had, has bought a car. If you have been on like a, you know, been along with someone who's bought a car mm -hmm. and th that is probably the number one thing where they don't even care why you want a new car really mm -hmm. it's more oh just buy this car because this car has this 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 and this is like well i just told you i don't really need all that i just want new tires so it, yeah you, i can go to any but any car dealership i just want one that the tires don't get flat in two days like when i go and like um two years ago when uh audrey and i were looking at apartments mm -hmm. they sh like oh yeah like check out the amenities you see the gym right there do you do you guys work out and we're like yeah we work out and they're like oh, well, we had this great gym there and Audrey and I both belong to a gym that we like. So I've used the workout room once and mm -hmm. she's never used it in a year and a half, two years. Yeah. So like the person could have saved their breath. And then what they what that does is that shows me that they're just doing their general pitch mm -hmm. instead of actually trying to tailor it towards what I want. Mm -hmm. So if somebody comes to me and says, Logan, I want a new website and I only want it because I don't care what it looks like. I just want it to generate leads. Well, the website's not really meant for that. There's other methods. So if you come to me and I just try to sell you a website, and I sell you a website and it doesn't generate a ton more leads overnight like you're hoping, you're going to be pissed at me. Mm -hmm. But all I had to do was ask one question, which was, why do you want a website? And that would have set the expectation up front of, whoa, 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 this is not really what you're looking for then. Maybe you want to try something else. Yeah, it's like a trickle-down effect too because you could just sell them the website and you they like, you know, it could be a great website, but it's mm -hmm. not they're not using it the way you intended them exactly. to use it or they don't you know know how to use it perspective they didn't need it really mm -hmm. so then it's a negative review down the road or it's like yeah. a negative experience that was could have been avoided by that one question and it should have been avoided by you know yeah i bought a website from logan it's not generating all the leads that i thought it was going to generate and all yeah. i had to do was just communicate the reason mm -hmm. so pain pleasure um give me this do a little bit of i guess back and forth alex so give me a a, a service that a contractor provides um 
interior painting interior painting why do you think a homeowner gets the inside of their paint or their home painted um they're tired of the color okay walk me through that what do you mean they're tired of the color they've been seeing green walls for about 12 years and they're on a new chapter of their life so they want to express that with a new paint job in their kitchen living room okay so they're on a new chapter of their life i'm curious how does the wall color translate over to the new chapter of their life uh, i think it symbolizes that you know they're not either stuck in the past or they're moving forward in mm -hmm. life and it's like a ref it's like a you know life refresher almost you walk into it that's but, interesting you say that what's what's wrong with being stuck in the past um i just think if you're stuck in the past you ain't moving forward and you're not you're not 25 anymore you know you're 45 so it's time to change the walls so what we just did there guys was we kind of got down a little bit deeper into the real root of why people buy from you. So if Alex goes, I want to get my wall painted and I'm a painter and I immediately just jump into all the different wall colors. Well, that's fine. But now Alex just looks at me as a painter. Mm -hmm. But if I walk him down this pain funnel, which I'm now learning that unless he gets these walls painted, he's going to feel like he's stuck in the past as a 45 year old man. And now I know, okay, well, great. This is what he's trying to accomplish. So if he wants to feel more grown up and more professional, I can tailor the conversation towards that. Mm -hmm. And I know what kind of pink color. I'm not going to probably put in hot pink if he's trying to look more grown up and not feel like he's stuck in the past. Yeah. So you can glean a lot of information and know how to take the conversation based off of what pain that they're really feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we do with all the marketing stuff. Because like, if somebody reads your website, and we've talked about this a lot on websites where website companies, when they build it, they just talk all about like, oh yeah, we're the best painter. You'll notice on our walls, we, there's no splash and uh, we can paint really good. But like now everybody says that, but if you can actually dig deep and explain like, hey, look, I know you want the inside of your, your home painted and you most likely want to do it because you don't want to feel stuck in the past anymore. It's been 12 years looking at the same color over and over and over and you realize you've grown up, but your walls haven't. So what about making a change? Mm -hmm. And then now they go, oh, shoot, that's me. Yeah, I feel like painters, that's super, it's super hard if you don't have this knowledge to convey that because you're, you're right. Like I can, well, if you're a professional painting company, I assume you know how to paint. So, I mean, you can, exactly. it's like, does it matter who you pick? But when you get to that reason, it's like, yes, it does. And, and there's certain industries like, um, like remodeling where the end result is a lot of it. Mm -hmm. You know, like you, you're going to pick somebody that where you like what the end result looks like. Yeah. But painting, staining, things like that, where it's like, you're just changing the color. You're adding something to it. It's not really individualistic. It's not. It, it's, it's simple, you know? Right. Unless there's like, yeah, we do like mural paintings or something like that mm -hmm. it's it's really just a bef like somebody's buying this for like the result not for like the artist yes. the side of things which painters i'm sorry that's just how i view it yeah maybe there's more to it and i just totally been blowing it but it's really more of like a utility thing versus especially exterior painting but interior painting as well it's not like somebody looks at the walls and goes you know what that's the best paint i've ever seen in my life i'm hiring you right now <laughs> yeah exactly it doesn't happen like it's like an oil change it's yeah you know like you don't go you know what the, God, I can't believe the oil that you use. This yeah. is amazing. You only notice if they mess up. Correct. So, so that's pain. So that's that's your pain. That's your pleasure. We could. I mean, there's, there should be a whole podcast on pain. Actually, let's do that. We'll do a whole podcast on pain and pleasure because that's so related to sales and, and marketing. It's mm -hmm. unbelievable. But to move on, step two is going to be budget. The idea of budget is you will straight up just say, "Hey, look." Instead of going, "What's your budget?" There's a better way to do it, and I'll talk about later on this podcast that there's right ways to do it and wrong ways to do it and they're completely different mm -hmm. um but just understanding are you in the same playing field i know for my dad for example when he would go out to somebody's house and they would want a brand new pond he would go yep brand new, like the pond you're looking at you're looking at about eleven thousand mm -hmm. dollars and it wasn't like they were going you know what i was thinking 10 5 but i don't know 11 seems high they're like oh i was thinking 1200 mm -hmm. they're so far off that it doesn't even make sense that he's there. Mm -hmm. And now the homeowner's embarrassed because they got to lie to him. And then now he's pissed because he just drove all over town to spend two hours talking about how great his ponds are just to realize that his budget is 10 times higher than everybody else's yeah. or than what they want to spend. Yeah. So the idea of, of setting up the budget over the phone at least figures out if you're in the same playing field to actually go out there. Mm -hmm. So the idea of all this Shinfu stuff, it, it naturally happens where you will sell more work over the phone, but it's realistically meant to save time from driving out to people that were never going to hire you in the first place. Mm -hmm. 
So budgeting. I mean, like that's really like like when you talk about the budget, it's just to figure out like with people will call me up, Logan, I want a website. We talk about some of like the pain, what are they looking for, why a website, so I can go, okay, great, that makes sense. You do you, and then what I do is I, I call it it's a um it's a price bracket where I say, Great, I can do we can talk about one of two websites. I've got a high end website where it does this, 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 and this, and that's sixteen thousand dollars. Or maybe if you're looking for something pretty basic and it's more of a starter website, we're looking at sixty five hundred. Mm-hmm. Is there somewhere in that range that you're thinking about, you know, spending? Because that's different sales pitches too. When you mm-hmm. go to a fifteen thousand one to a six exactly, like it's it's way different because yeah. a fifteen thousand dollar website is different than a six thousand. The same way that a hundred and fifty thousand dollar kitchen is different than a sixty thousand dollar kitchen. Now, how annoying is it to hear that you have to hear the fifteen thousand one be like, okay, I'm not even close to that. So you can just you know so yeah it's important exactly so i so i just go through like the pain and the pleasure mm-hmm. the same way that contractor needs to go through pain and pleasure and then they go great we've got a couple different options we've got really high end we've got medium and we've got low end which one do you want to talk about and then by bracketing the price up front it makes you less snaky mm-hmm. and i know a lot of people say we're supposed to ask about budget I, I personally, like, I sell the way that I buy. So, mm-hmm. like, I had a sales call with a guy the other day, and he was like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, like, join, like, this, like, a different marketing program for myself that's, like, all focused on personal branding. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the end of it, he was like, I was like, oh, I'm just curious. Like, what does something like this cost? He goes, what do you think something like this costs? And I was like, well, to be honest, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. And I just got quiet. And he got quiet, and he got, like, the awkward, like, you're waiting for the next person to break, and I didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. He was like, well, you might be thinking this price is this, 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 but it's only five thousand dollars. And I'm like, okay, great. But I hate, like, especially because like this is set price for this. Yeah. But I hate when people like come to me and go, well, what's your budget? Because then it's kind of shitty. Because if I was like, oh, my budget on this is eight thousand, and they go, oh, eight thousand, uh, yeah, I can make that work. It, yeah. But it's, it's like it's a five thousand dollar program, and I just got taken advantage of. Yeah, I, I, I get that. So I was thinking the other way, where it's like you'd be embarrassed because you don't have five grand that's up there too yeah i was thinking were you um we growing up were you was your family kind of like upfront about money like it was not until recently really it used to be this this standard it's so funny growing up my dad was like you know like the, the normal my mom my mom's like more proper with with her mannerisms mm-hmm. just because like the way that she was brought up military family um her her father was like um the uh xo which is like the vice president mm-hmm. of like a squadron and stuff so yeah all eyes are on you you have to be on your p's and q's at all time so all the mannerisms were very be seen not heard don't talk about money you know we i went to um like manners classes growing up because that was her yeah like that was her side of things and with him he was still like don't talk about money but ever since he started this shinfu stuff um back in 2014 uh, 2013 2014 he's now very upfront with it yeah because you realize for the most part, like everybody knows what everybody else makes mm-hmm. for the for you know because you kind of understanding of this stuff, but everybody it's still so taboo. Yeah, that that's what I was about to bring up because my family wasn't we're not like you know boasting like either oh you know you make this you make this, but like we weren't afraid to talk about money mm-hmm. amongst themselves at least, and it's like. I feel like a lot of people are, are like, oh, money's off limits. And to the point where it's like, we don't even talk, have to talk about it. But it's like, it's such an important part of it is. selling. It's everything. That I don't know how you can't. And like, that's like my dad's business is very price central. So that's mm-hmm. why he's just like, I'm just open about it. Like, it's what I am. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it. Yeah. You know, or it's a, you don't value it. You don't value it. It's, yeah. it's, it's, one, it's crazy. It's like porn. Yeah. Everybody, what you said, yeah, but not even know what I was going to say. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, Let's you know, see okay. where we're going with this one. Everybody watches it. And you see what are the most popular categories. So you know there's a good chance that Alex and I are into the same stuff, but we don't talk about it because it's taboo. Netflix, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Oh, yeah, or Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, they have like the most popular stuff up there for a reason. Mm-hmm. Everybody watches it, but nobody talks about it because, oh, no, you can't bring that up. And that's the same thing with money is you can't bring it up yet. I'm like, you're you're a government worker. Mm-hmm. I can literally look up online how yeah. much you make. Yeah, it's public information. Yes, yeah. like like your salary is out there. So don't don't try to pull this like, oh, we don't talk about money because I've got Google in my pocket. Yeah. So um, the the budget stuff, especially with sales, and I'm I'm more bold on this because when I talk to somebody and they go, I'm looking for this, this, and this, I'll go, like, hey, I'm just curious, what was your 2019 or last year's top line revenue? Because I want to know, am I talking to somebody with a five million dollar business? Which, 
marketing, like the money they spend on marketing is going to be a smaller percentage of their total revenue? Or is this a $100,000 business where if we do a $10,000 website, this is literally 10% of their total revenue, which I'm like, I, you know, for a website, I wouldn't advise that. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that I'm tailoring it to your specific business. And that's why I need to talk about the budget. Yeah. Because I need to figure out what makes the most sense for you. You know, because if you want all the bells and whistles, but you only got 300 bucks to spend on a website, it's a short conversation. Yeah. Budget's big. Mm -hmm. Number three is going to be the yes or no. What, uh, actually, I think they do it decision makers, but I go like they would do yes or Like it doesn't matter. They're interchangeable. Yeah. They're more so interchangeable. Um, <clears throat> yes or no means that when you're a contractor and you go out to somebody's house, all you want from there is you don't want them to lie to you and say something like, I got to think it over or... Let me talk to my accountant or, you know what, I I don't know, like just give me a couple of days because that is always a no. Mm -hmm. It's what we call a slow no. How many times, Alex, have you ever had to talk to your accountant? If you're a business owner, say, how many times do you think you talk to your accountant to go, well, I got to I gotta think it over on this. Let me talk to my CPA. Or how many times do you think I've ever done that? I honestly have no idea. Zero. Oh, zero times. Zero. I've literally never been like, hey, Dean. Do I have the money for this? Because I know how much money I have. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it's... Because they, they know your numbers too. So, I mean, and yeah, I mean, like, everyone should know it. Right. You know, like for you. So if I said, Alex, like, you know, hey, I want to sell you this uh, $20,000 car. Do you need to talk to somebody about if you can no. afford it? Yeah. No, I know. Because you know. Afford it. Yeah. yeah, you know damn well, like, Better can you example. do it or not? <laughs> yeah. So it's it's easier because you know what the answer is, but they use that excuse because they don't want to... It's kind of like in the... Um, in like the South, especially, but when people are like, you know, we should hang out this summer. Like, yeah, let's just, we'll totally hang out, but it's a counterfeit invitation. Mm -hmm. I don't actually want to hang out with you mm -hmm. and you don't actually want to hang out with me, but we just say that to be cordial. We should catch up sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey dude, let's just go grab a beer. Mm -hmm. But we both know we don't want to do that. That beer's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. And that's how homeowners do it with you as a contractor when you're in their space. They don't want to hurt your feelings. So they go, you know what? Yeah. I really love what you have to say. Let me just, let me just do some numbers. And people say that to me all the time. You know what, Logan? Uh, this makes sense. Let me just go back over my budget and just double check. And I, I go, look, hey, can I be frank with you? I've literally never heard that response before and then ended up selling that you selling somebody work. Mm -hmm. So what's going on here? And I have a couple other like tricks up my not up my sleeve, but like things to say yeah. in that situation. Yeah. Um actually screw it, I'll just say it. So what I would do in that situation is if somebody said, you know what, I I gotta think about this. And I go, okay, I'm just curious. Aside from the money, what else would stop you from moving forward? And what that does is they go either nothing, which means it truly is a money issue, or they go, well, I'm not so sure that, and then now I realize that's the root of the problem. It's not actually the money is the problem. It's this other thing. So if I take money off the table, and the way that contractors do this stuff is they go, I'm just curious, if this was free, would you move forward? Or... What's even better, and I heard this from Marcus Sheridan, was, okay, I'm just curious, at, at what price would this make sense for you? Mm -hmm. um, and that's more of a budget thing, but that way it's like, you now you're, you're going through that. But the whole idea of this is you're really trying to, with the yes or no, stop the amount of people that need to quote unquote think about it and then ghost you. Yeah. Because otherwise- You want the straight answer, the yes the straight or answer, the no. Right. Like, and you can go, look, I'm going to be frank, I'm okay with a no, I'd prefer a yes. Mm-hmm. But I'm okay with a no because yeah. the last thing that I want to do is I don't want to chase you around any more than you want to be chased. Mm -hmm. And they go, oh, thank God. You know what? You're right. I'm good with that. But now it puts the pressure on them to give you an answer, yes or no. Yeah. I don't know if if you could answer this or not, but how many times do you think like contractors get hooked on that that ladder where it's, yes, I'll, let me think about it, and you're still you know, out there trying to call them back, call them back to try to close that sale? How often do you think that happens? Because I know a car salesman, they'll do that once a day probably. So I don't. I I would truthfully think because rejection is so real, mm -hmm. and as a business owner, you have so many other things going on that like, unless you literally have no work, yeah, you're gonna find other things to do. You just forget that, about it. Yeah, or or like you avoid it because you're like, well, I could either call them and potentially get rejected again, or I could do something else. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a firm believer that you need to follow up over and over and over and over and over. And I'm good with that, but I'm good with that until they give you a no. Mm -hmm. And eventually, it, it becomes it's like okay, it's enough. Stop. But there's a lot of people that I think what happens with a lot of contractors and they go out, they do a discovery 
consultation. They go out for free. They talk for a while, and then they hope that the bid that they send people via email, that that alleviates all problems. Like somehow, like the homeowner actually has all these different objections and reservations to hiring you, and you don't pick up on any of that, and you just assume that, oh, if I just email them the bid, they're going to go with me, or, mm -hmm. hey, this bid's going to explain everything to them. And if a bid actually explains everything to them, then that means that you probably spent like eight hours working on this bid, and most of the time they're not going to you know, even respond anyway. Mm -hmm. So you waste all your time at the house, and then as soon as you get back, you got to spend a bunch of time working on a bid, send it over to them, and they don't even go with you anyway. Yeah. How many times do you think like people that have multiple contractors come to the house they accept one offer, don't accept your offer, and they tell you, no, we accepted somebody else. I, I don't think that would ever happen. No. They, no, they, they, they would just know, ghost yeah, you. Yeah, they just ghost you and that's it's easier. And then how embarrassing would that be to call back, you know, two months later and be like, hey, did you ever get this? Oh, yeah, we did actually. Oh. Yeah, like, it, it, to be fair, though, like, I, like I'm like i a fan of that. Like, I've actually uh, done a couple of, like, I've, I've oh, sold yeah. work off that where I'm like, hey, I'm just curious, like, did you ever move forward with that? Because a lot of times people don't move forward because of, like, the sticker shock value, and they don't actually do anything with it. They don't. They won't move forward with any contractor. Mm -hmm. And then they just save up a little bit more money and you call them back and like, hey, I'm just curious. Did you ever do this? And like, you know what? I'm glad you called. So I'm a firm believer in doing that. But the idea that you just like get ghosted and you have to keep calling, calling, calling. And a lot of people still lie to me. Yeah. There's people that are probably listening to this podcast that have told me, yes, Logan, don't worry. Like, I will tell you yes or no next time you call. And I'm like, all right, man, because trust me, you don't have like you can tell me right now that this is too much money mm -hmm. or I suck at showing the value in this and don't feel obligated. Like I won't call you back. I'm like, no, call me back. And then when I call them back, guess what they do? Ghost me. Ghost you, yeah. Yep, because it's easier. So it happens. Everybody does it. If you're a contractor listening to this and you get mad at people that, that do this to you, trust me, you do this to other people mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. It happens all day long. That's just part of being in sales. Mm -hmm. Part four is decision makers. Step four is going to be actually having all parties that are able to make the decision there on the spot because that removes the objection of, let me talk to my spouse, let me talk to my accountant, let me talk to so-and-so. And usually what that means is we're not going to move forward and I'm going to blame it on them or the other person has no say in it, yet it's half their home too. So if you don't have all decision makers there when you're speaking, you're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. It's a tougher question to ask people of, hey, who else is involved in this or who else is excited about getting this thing done? Or, hey, in my household, if I'm going to make a decision like this, my wife has to be there. Is there somebody that needs to be there you know, in your household when mm -hmm. we talk? And they're going to go, yeah, there totally is. I feel like this, this one's more case sensitive where you, you have to kind of watch how you word it. 100%. Yeah. Because I know my dad's gotten burned before where he was talking to some woman. And he just said, yeah, I'm just curious, like, you know, in my household, it's this, this, and this. Do you have a husband or somebody that needs to be there? And she goes, Steve, this is not the 1950s. I can decide for myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. And guess what happens when he, when he said, you know what? All right, fine. I'll come out there. Guess what happens when he went out there? Goes to them. She said, I need to talk to my husband. Oh, my God. Yep. No way. After he, she said, this is not the 1950s, she so, told no. him, <laughs> I need to talk to my husband and didn't move forward. That's tough. Yep. I think the best person I've heard use this is Derek on some of his live how's you know, he do it he, I, he's like you know I'm, I'm just curious logan um you know before we move forward it, i mean is this should we be asking anybody else if like you know this is okay like is there anybody else involved mm -hmm. in, in in this decision kind of similar how you just said it and a lot of times the guy would be like yeah you know my wife is kind of like you know like every wife she's a, the, the decision maker so yeah. i have to run it by her and he's like do you think it'd be smart if we like include her on this and it's like the way he says it though it's how you say it yeah it's very like compassionate it's not aggressive it doesn't come off aggressive you know what i mean and that's a big part of all of this is it's how you say it not not just what you say it's how you say it because the the fifth part is and i'll go back to the what you know the derek thing mm -hmm. fifth thing is the consultation fee not everybody does this however the better that you get at the first four steps the consultation fee becomes obsolete because the person's already bought from you in their mind doesn't matter if you have a 500 hundred dollar consultation fee just to go out there you use this more so as like the final like BS meter because mm -hmm. when you first start this Shin Fu stuff, you're going to go through it and people are going to go, oh, yeah, like, yeah, you know, I could totally splurge and spend 70 grand on a kitchen. And you go, okay, just so you know, I got a $200 consultation fee for some reason if I come out there and we don't move forward with the project. And they go, whoa, no way. I I'm not paying that. And that's like your way of realizing that they're just a window shopper. Mm -hmm. So the consultation fee, not everybody does it. 
and the better you get at it, the less relevant it is, but it's a good, it's called like, they call it the BS meter, mm. which is the way of really gauging like, is somebody actually gonna move forward or not? Yeah. So the way that Derek, uh, what, what Alex was talking about was, it's, it's how you say it. So a lot of people I talk to, that when they first join the Contractor Sales Academy, they'll say, oh, I was already doing all this stuff anyway, so I'm, I'm good, I just wanna like kinda hone in my skills. I'm like, okay. Let's, let's walk through it. And then we do like a role play. And I realized instead of them going, you know, like the proper way to, to get the budget, which is to bracket, they go, okay, Logan, uh, what's your budget? And I'm like, well, that's a really shitty way to ask me that. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, they're technically hitting the right steps, but the way that they ask them, are, it's, it's so crass and so it just seems rude mm-hmm. that it's like, I mean, yes, technically you're hitting all five steps, but the way that you're asking it, like, it doesn't make me feel good at all. You're hitting him very like loosely. You're just like tapping the surface. That's You're not all, yeah. even getting into what it at actually all. is. And and they and they do that and they're like, well, I just asked like, you know, instead of like saying it properly, which is, hey, in my household, I gotta have like my wife sit in on this. Um, is there anybody in your household? Versus, hey, does your wife need to be there? Yeah. That's like you very hear the aggressive. difference. Yeah. And that's the same thing. What's your budget? Hey, when I come out there, can you give me a yes or a no? Hey, just so you know, I've got a consultation fee of five hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah. And it's just like, whoa, dude, like, chill out. Well, relax. So bro. that's really like the where the the they call it the spirit of the conversation comes in. But that's the whole power of the CSA because mm-hmm. like the Shin Fu, it's straightforward. I just told you all five steps. It's not a secret, but the secret really is the actual practicing of it to learn how to say it appropriately. Because if somebody throws an objection at you and it catches you off guard. If you don't practice this stuff, you're not going to know what to say, A, or B, you're going to get so flustered that you're going to say something and totally blow it. Mm-hmm. Because again, oh yeah, what's your budget? It's like, all right, dude. Like, Especially like in 2020, like that lady's right. It's definitely not 1950 anymore, but yeah. I feel like people are very sensitive now to like anything you could say. And it's like, you just don't want any, any little thing that could come, yeah. come of that. Just like practice how to say it you know look in the mirror do the role plays because like role plays i mean i've never really done them but i could see how like derek's a master at him you're like a master at him like you can't just do that overnight i, I remember the first one i ever did and, and we say role play it's a sales role play yeah. one person pretends to be a, the contractor slash salesman the other person pretends to be the homeowner and the first time i did it i had to keep uh we call it tapping out where it's like you just stop the role play because it was, it was so it was so awkward i had no idea what to say mm-hmm. And now, I mean, I've, I've probably done eh, probably close to 400 at this point. It's like a script in your head now. I, I know exactly. And, I, and that's the thing is I also script this stuff. Like I know exactly what questions I'm going to ask in the exact order mm-hmm. because there's a rhyme and a reason to it. The same way that when we build a website, I don't start off with, hey, you know, um, check out our testimonials. It's actually like there's a way that you go down the path. Mm-hmm. Same thing with, with sales is that there's an actual like – there's a reason these five steps are in this order. Because if you lead off and you call me and I go, hey, Alex, I appreciate you reaching out to me. Just so you know, if, if we end up going, you know, moving forward on something like this, I've got a consultation fee. And you're like, for what? Like, we didn't even talk about anything. Like, mm-hmm. So there's an actual, this is five steps in this order for this specific reason. Yeah. Um, so when you do so many of these in the practice, that's really what the power of like the community of the CSA is it helps immensely. Yeah, it's designed to also save you time, money. Like this is this this process is if you do it as advertised, it's, you know, it's supposed to save you so much in your business. It is. Um the I mean, it, this is an understatement, but they talk about uh you'll you'll get about a third of your time back and you actually because of the right questions that you ask, you'll make about a third more money. So a third you work one third less time and you make a third more money. Wow. What you think of that? I mean, and it's all if you do this the right stuff, it's like it's a six month process. But imagine if you spent six months, you just do the role plays, you do this, you do that, and everybody's gonna that's listening to this right now that's not part of CSA, you're gonna go, Well, I just don't have six months, it's about to be the busy season, it's about to be this, and it's never the right time. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm, you know, talking about I was talking to my buddy about um proposing. And he, I was like, yeah, it's not the right time. He's like, Logan, it's never the right time. There's always going to be a reason that you're not doing this. Mm-hmm. But with this kind of stuff, I mean, to learn how to sell is probably like, I'm so glad I went through all these reps with it because like the conversations now for me are easier. Mm-hmm. I still get tripped up. So I still have to continue to practice role playing every so often. But I'm like, I've become such a student of this that it's now a natural conversation. 
Yeah. And it sounds cocky and it is cocky, but afterwards if I sell somebody something, especially if they're part of the CSA, I'll go, Hey, do you mind if I explain to you how I just sold you right there? Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, God, please don't have an ego. Because if they have an ego, yeah, yeah. I'm screwed. It's rough, yeah. But they always, they go, yeah, hit me. And I'm like, okay, I asked you this, which you said this. And then because you said that, here's how I mirrored you or I like came back and challenged you on this. Mm-hmm. And I always ask people at the end of any call, I go, I'm just curious, how did this conversation go? Because I want to know, was I pushy? Was I too blunt? Because I, I tend to err on that side of things. And they're always like, Logan, this has felt like a normal conversation. I've I've heard the Shin Fu stuff before. I knew you were doing it to me, but it truly felt like you were just trying to help me, which is literally what it is. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to figure out, like, it's kind of like how Tony Robbins does it, where when somebody says, yeah, I got a problem. Uh, you know, I can't talk to my, I haven't talked to my wife in a year. And instead of him, like, pushing you on it, he's just trying to help you open your mind to understand there's more to it because humans are naturally... Um, averse like they have like loss aversion so they don't want to i don't know like lose something so like when i sell something and people like yeah i just don't have the money right now i'm like okay i'm just curious like do you actually not have the money or is there something else going on that i'm doing a very poor job of showing you how valuable this could be to your business Mm -hmm. and then so i'm not trying it's not like it's snaky thing it's really just trying to get you to truly understand the full picture of what we're talking about here and once that happens then people go, oh, okay. Because, like, I want a new kitchen. Great. 75 grand. Oh, my God. I can't spend that. Like, I'm going to get divorced. Okay, great. You're going to get divorced. But let's think about it for a second. What's the reason that you want this? Well, I want it because I want to spend more time with my wife or my husband. And the kitchen is where we always hang out. And what we got right now is terrible. So, okay. So, now, at one point, you're saying 75 grand, you're going to get divorced. But you're buying this to become closer. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think your spouse would say? to the 75 grand, you know? So it's, yeah. It, yeah. Let's get divorced. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's one of the, so you just have to really think about like why people are buying this stuff. And if you go in this order with the Shin Fu, it, it will change how you sell. It will change how you communicate with people. The way that I communicate with like you guys, mm-hmm. um, Alex, Melissa, like Laura, Chris, like all you guys, I, like I generally, always, I try my best to always ask how or what questions, you know, and it's just, makes it challenges you to think on your own and figure stuff out by yourself because when you become empowered i'm sorry when you become responsible for your responses you become empowered and that's the same thing with selling to clients when clients feel like they're the ones coming up with the answers or how to do something they now feel like they're in control and they're empowering themselves which means that you are now the contractor that they want to go with it's since confidence too it's confidence full control exactly and that's exactly what you want and that's the big reason why this Shin Fu stuff works so well. Um, it's just because it's it's straight up. It just it guides the people in the right direction. They feel like they're in control, but it protects both your time and their time. And if you sit here and you listen to the five steps and you go, I already do that. I don't need this Shin Fu. Trust me. There's so many. Pe- I, I'm still learning stuff. Like mm-hmm. the way that the Shin Fu process works is when you first do it, you go, wow, this can never work. Then you do a little bit and you go, wow, this actually does work. I'm saving so much time. And then usually that's when people quit the CSA is they go, you know what? I, I've learned it all. I'm saving so much time. I'm leaving. But there's actually, it's, it's it's probably about, it took me about a year and a half, I would say, of practicing this stuff to finally learn how to s- man, not manipulate what I'm saying, but like switch it around. Because what people use it for, for the most part, is they just want to weed out tire kickers. Mm-hmm. But I now use it where I can, people who were a tire kicker at first, when we first got on the call, I can now make them actually see the value in it. And they go from a tire kicker to somebody who actually has a lot of money to spend. I just needed to dig a little bit deeper. So you're basically turning, so you basically went from just weeding out to the good clients. Correct. That will actually buy now to now being in it for so long. Converting the, the nose to yes. People. Yeah. Yes, that's the big difference of doing this over and over and over is otherwise you're just separating the nose faster. Mm-hmm. But now I'm taking the nose, separating out the hell nose and getting the maybe nose into yeses. That's pretty, that's valuable. It's super valuable. Yeah, that, it's, that, it, that, that would keep me in it because once you reach, I feel like you're right. I feel like a lot of people will leave because they're like, all right, I know how to do it. Yeah. But to be able to now have that skill where you can now, well, I can turn, basically anybody who calls, I can turn them into a sale now. 
for, as long as they have the money. Yes. If they have the money, then I know if they if they physically don't have the money, then I, I can do there's not much that. I can do about that. Yeah. But if they have the money, if I and and part of it is also it's a lot of effort because you're just like mentally you have to be on. But I can turn a lot of those people. It may not be today, mm-hmm. but I know how to have a good enough conversation. And then down the road, maybe in like a month, reach back out and, and re-engage. That's that's awesome. That's pretty yeah. cool. It's not it's not hundred percent of the time. No. But I would say at this point, like where I am today versus a year ago, I'm way better at turning the maybe no's into yeses just because if they give me an objection, instead of me going, All right, well then you're too cheap for me, I'm out. I know how to re engage that and go, Okay, well, you know, we didn't talk about the the, your business partner before let's talk about them what what do they want in this situation mm-hmm. you know so you know how to like it's like a new challenge almost it is yes and and whenever you feel like you're getting stale like oh i know it all once you learn a few more word tracks i'll then take those word like objection handling word tracks and i'll then practice some more role plays and see how they play out because it's just like stand-up comedy it's like it's all about timing and rhythm and the punchline mm-hmm. and you got to practice this over and over and over until you refine it and you make it good like yeah. Kevin Hart doesn't just step on stage and do a Netflix special. He goes through the small clubs practicing new material mm-hmm. and he refines it there. Then he goes to medium sized clubs, practices it again, refines it there. And now he's got like a really strong working prototype of a joke. And then he takes it to Madison Square Garden and does a Netflix special. You don't just do it once and figure it out. You got to practice over and over and over. Mm-hmm. So it's helped me out immensely. I use it every day in both business and personal life, but. I mean, I can't speak high enough about it. Yeah, I, I've seen it just as a bystander. How much has improved, and like, I think it's, I think it's cool to be able to break down something that used to be like so. I feel like people think are so tough, but mm-hmm. you break it down, and you can make it actually pretty simple. Almost, it's it's super simple, and once you learn this stuff, you'll see how other sales reps sell, mm-hmm. and you're like, man, you need help. It makes you break down like even like a regular conversation it makes you break it down a little bit more, and be yeah. like, oh, okay, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I love it. So, guys, I would say on this, if you like this stuff, if, if this, if you're not part of the Contractor Sales Academy and you've been thinking about doing this for a while, go join. It's contractorsalesacademy.com. I've never seen, like, I, would, I, I can't say I've never seen somebody do it because we, we help market for them. I would say every so often you have somebody that joins and goes, you know what, this is just not what I thought it was. But that's it's like ninety it's it's, it's over ninety nine percent of people mm-hmm. that join stay for a long time because they absolutely just love it and it's like life changing. It's a good kick in the ass too if you need that too because I feel like a lot of everybody people that leave it. everybody needs it and I think the people that leave too early they're like they just kind of want to sit back and let that this program yeah. do it which no programs like that so it, it, yeah so contractor sales academy seriously it's it's unbelievable and if you're in the CSA right now. I hope what you gleaned from this was the fact that the longer you stay in it, the more role plays you do, the more you're going to switch from just filtering out the no's to understanding how to convert the no's into yeses, whether it's right on the spot or you realize that maybe they're not ready, but they need their spouse there on the phone and you now learn, okay, well, let me just schedule a follow-up call with both decision makers there and then we talk. So it's it's understanding that you don't always go for the sale or the close, but you always go for the next form of commitment, mm-hmm. which could be another phone call or another this or another that. So, you know, that's ho- smart. Yeah, it's and that's it's not too that's pushy. Big. Exactly. You know, and that's like what I've really learned a lot of is don't always go for the sale. Like, hey, you want to buy today? OK, great. I'll never talk to you again. It's like, great. Like, OK, you want to think about it? You know, let's think about it together right when now. When should I call you back? Or yeah. When are you going to call me back? Yeah. Right? And you just schedule you just schedule the next commitment. Mm-hmm. So, Contractor Sales Academy, I love it. I think you love it. I love it too. He loves it too. Interesting. Cool. Guys, thank you very much. And if you watch this on YouTube, hit the like button and uh, we'll be good to go. Yeah. Sounds good. See you guys.